Hello, my name is Dr. Andres Lothario, a veterinary resident at the Ohio State University. Welcome to the fourth and last video of a series on ticks and tick-borne diseases created for livestock producers in Ohio. In this video, we'll talk about management and surveillance for ticks relevant to people and animals in Ohio. People and animals typically get exposed to tick bites when they venture into tick habitat through outdoor activities, which depending on the tick species may be grasslands or the, the woods. Two other factors that affect exposure risk are seasonal tick behavior in abundance and seasonal livestock behavior, such as when producers put out their livestock to pasture. Another factor is having a high risk occupation, such as being an animal producer or a veterinary professional. Although ticks vary seasonally in how many there are and how active they are, exposure risk to tick bites can be present year round. For example, the black legged or deer tick that transmits the Lyme disease bacteria is active all year round, although most cases of Lyme disease get reported over the summertime, as shown in the figure on the right. This is why it's important to practice tick prevention for yourself and your animals all year round. Now let's talk about how to reduce exposure risk for you and your animals. I can break this down to two types of management, physical and cultural or chemical management. Let's begin with physical and cultural management. First, you should be aware and avoid tick infested areas for yourself and your animals. When you venture into tick habitat, you should wear light colored long pants and sleeves and tuck everything in to prevent ticks from getting to your skin. After you leave tick habitat, you should check yourself for ticks, especially at places indicated in the figure on the right and bathe within two hours to wash off any ticks that have not attached. You should also check your pets and livestock for ticks, especially at places where ticks are likely to attach, which are shown in these pictures with red circles. For dogs and cats, you should check for ticks around the eyelids and tail, under the collar, between the toes and back legs, and in and around the ears. For horses, cattle, and other livestock, you should check around the tail and rump, between the hind legs and under the forelegs, on the upper back, neck, face, ears, and around the eyelids. To safely and effectively remove ticks from yourself and your animals, use a tweezer or another specialized removal tool by grasping the tick closest to the skin. Pull gently upwards without twisting or yanking and wash the bite side afterwards. Petroleum jelly, nail polish, hot matches, or any other product are not effective methods. It could increase the risk of infection and injury. Let's finish off with physical and cultural management. There are methods that can be applied to the environment to reduce exposure to tick bites. You can reduce desirable habitat for ticks or wildlife that ticks feed on by clearing up any debris from pasture and keeping grasses short. You can also prevent deer and other wildlife that ticks like to feed on by setting physical barriers such as fences. Now let's get into chemical management, which you can use for yourself, your animals and the environment. For yourself, you should use EPA registered insect repellents, and if in doubt, you can find one using the EPA search tool on your screen. For pet and livestock, there are many repellents you can purchase under guidance from your veterinarian. For dogs, there is also an approved vaccine for Lyme disease that you can get from your veterinarian. Other options include applying EPA approved pesticides on pasture or other habitat types, and treating clothing and gear with uh, permethrin insecticide. Before finishing up this presentation, I'd like to make you aware that the Ohio State University is accepting tick submissions from the public for identification and pathogen testing. You can read more details on the link you see on your screen. We share this information with the Ohio Department of Health to promote public health. By engaging in this program, you can become an active stakeholder in tick surveillance. This concludes this video on tick management and surveillance funded by USDA North Central IPM Center. Thank you for your attention.